What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to take care of your very own pet praying mantis. Before getting a pet praying mantis, the main thing you want to do is obviously get something to keep it in. This is a medium size critter keeper, I believe. I believe it's a medium size one. They get a little bigger than this and a little smaller than this. This is the ideal size. I've kept so many in this. It, it fits them good. It keeps them happy. Perfect sized. This is mainly if you're going to get a big praying mantis. If you're going to ra if you're going to raise a praying mantis, you're going to need to start out a little smaller than this. But this, all around, if you're getting a praying mantis in general, a cage like this is ideal. Step number two is you're going to want to set up a habitat for the praying mantis. Now praying mantises are not super picky with their habitat. What you're basically going to want to do is give them something to climb on and basically feed them. That's literally it. As long as they can kill stuff and have a place to hide, not really hide, but have a place to climb on, sit on, rest on, that's literally all they care about. For the humidity, this is the simplest thing you can do to keep the cage humid, to keep them hydrated and everything. You just take a paper towel, open your cage just like so. Place your paper towel on the bottom, and obviously it's not doing anything yet because it's dry. So you take your spray bottle, spray her down good, nice and damp and wet, and that's going to hold humidity good. And it's also going to provide a nice cushion to the bottom of your cage. Say if your praying mantis starts walking along the bottom, you're going to want it to have something to actually be able to grab onto and walk on rather than a smooth surface where they really can't grab onto super well at all and it'll kind of irritate them or stress them out. So this paper towel is all around good. It's easy to clean. It, obviously they go to the bathroom like any, any other living thing. They go to the bathroom so they'll poop all over this paper towel and once they like I guess if you will out, out pooped it then you, all you do is change the paper towel and spray a new one. And this will dry out fairly quickly. So, I mean, you just want to keep it keep it wet a couple times a day. I mean, you can also use stuff like in this little, little air cage we got here. You can see this is just dirt. I don't know how well I picked it up. You can just use dirt just like that and keep it wet. Same concept. Just spray it. This is a toad, by the way. Just kind of off the side. There you go. How you doing, Thanos? Anyway... Basically, if you're using dirt, this is also the same same concept. I don't know. It's kind of dark, so I don't know if the camera's picking up. But you can kind of see how I'm keeping it, keeping it moist, just like that. Toads need moist moisture too, so I mean, I guess I'm kind of helping him out. But that's kind of if you're gonna use dirt or a paper towel, it really doesn't matter. If you use dirt, I, if you use dirt, the mantis's poop will kind of just turn into the dirt. If you, I don't really know how to explain that, but it kind of just compost itself into the dirt I guess so you don't, don't really have to clean it up too often because a praying mantis isn't really going to make they're not messy they aren't messy creatures the next thing is obviously if I put the lid on here does this look complete it's missing something it's missing something for the praying mantis to climb on so basically depending on your mantis it depends on the mantis they each have the, their own personality some of them most of them if you catch a praying mantis it's just gonna sit on this on the lid. It's gonna grab this stuff right here. It's just gonna hang upside down on the lid. But say if you raise one and it's like more acclimated to you and it feels more comfortable that and all that stuff, sticks are all obviously the best. So what you just wanna do, if I can I don't want this to go in here. Just wedge them in kind of naturally. Like this. Like that. Just anywhere you, anywhere you want. Just make sure <clears throat> if I do this, there's room for them to hang upside down on. And there's room for it to get to the top of the cage. So if I were to do this, you can see how the sticks reach the top. And that is basically it. You can get, either go all out. This is the most basic it can get. I know I've been saying obviously and basically a lot. That's because I'm trying to like do the simplest way possible so then... If you want a pet praying mantis, you don't have to go all out to get one. Like, this is all you have to do. I mean, you can get even more basic than this. 
and like get like a like this is a here get this stuff out of the way this is a tupperware container i think that's what it's called tupperware container or something like that it's, it's just a container and that holds this toad fine you could do the same thing with the praying mantis if you want you just get like a container like this i mean this is more ideal for me it's easy to take the lid off a little feeding hole there and you just can do whatever you want you're almost ready to add the praying mantis but first you got to make sure you have food for your praying mantis what i recommend if you're getting a new praying mantis to buy food that's going to run like a cricket or not a cricket but crickets flies even cockroaches grasshoppers things like that are ideal because they move and the movement is what attracts the praying mantis's instincts to attack and all that stuff but what i use for example this is just what i have i've got mealworms i just keep them in this little tub with some oatmeal and some egg cartons let's just grab one for example this is what i feed my praying mantises in here this is not ideal because if you drop a mealworm into here it's going to go straight under this paper tent. Well, it's just gonna sit there right now, but what they're what they're going to do is go straight under that paper towel, and you don't want that. Because if it goes under the paper towel, your praying mantis will not eat it. So I would not recommend mealworms personally. That's just what I feed mine because they're comfortable with me. I can hand feed them and tong feed them and stuff like that. If you're getting a new praying mantis, I would just recommend crickets or grasshoppers or flies, like I said. Something that's not going to hide from the praying mantis and something that the praying mantis can hunt pretty easily. Now, it's time to add the praying mantis. And here we have it. This is a pretty common species of praying mantis. It is a Chinese praying mantis. This here is an adult female. I actually found this guy in my yard. I actually released it when it, was a, when it hatched. I released an egg sac into my yard. And it stuck around. So that's super cool. But today, you're going to be a, a little demonstration bug to show people how to take care of praying masses. So let's add it in to the cage. This one's obviously a wild one. So like I said, it's going to go straight to the lid. And there she goes. Straight to the top of the lid there. Just like that. Now for these, because they go straight to the top of the lid, what you can do to feed them, since they're gonna be on top instead of running around, when you first get them, if they behave similar to this, this is just freshly caught. You can see how it's kind of not used to the cage. So what you can do is you can, to feed it easier, you can wait till it calms down and then proceed to open the lid. And obviously when it's not moving, you will take your tongs and drop a bug right in front of it. And again, it depends on the personality of the praying mantises. Some of them will just continue to run away and some will cooperate. So that's the thing about a wild praying mantis is you kind of never know what you're going to, what you're really going to get. If you raise one that you kind of, you kind of know, you kind of know how they behave. But yeah. That's basically it for these praying mantises. Here is another praying mantis that was I released a long time ago. Not a long time ago, but I released when it was I hatched it and released it. The same same egg sac, except this one is still a nymph. You can tell that by you can see how it does not have wings. Now that's kind of key. Don't fight, please. I'll move you over here. Now you can see, this is important. If you're going to have a nymph, what you need, you need a cage that has a good lid like this. Because if you have a cage with a lid like this, you can see it just has holes and nothing, no grip. Like, look, I will demonstrate here quick. If I put this praying mantis on the lid and flip it over, she's slipping and sliding. Look at that. She ain't stable. You want her to be able to grab pretty good. Now if I put her on this lid, basically something that has a lot of friction. 
something that's going to be able to grab onto really well and hang comfortably. Because if a nymph can't hang comfortably, it'll die. You see, when a praying mantis grows, they shed their skin. And praying mantis especially have a lot of trouble with that. Like they hatch a couple hundred in an egg sac because so many of them die off by shedding their skin. If they mess it up, they're gonna die. So basically, if you have a praying mantis nymph and it sheds its skin wrong, just put it out of its misery, put it in the freezer. Don't even bother trying to revive it because it's, it's not gonna happen. It's just going to starve to death and suffer. So hopefully you can shed your skin successfully and get your wings and become nice and big like this bad boy right here. I plan on getting a small praying mantis and raising it to become a, an adult praying mantis. This is how you start. Take a container just like this and basically, you know, I kind of already have it set up, but I'll just go through what the setup is real quick. Let's get the mantis out of here real quick. Well, you can stay in there. First, you get another small piece of paper towel. And instead of sticks, you get a popsicle stick. The popsicle stick will fit in here just about perfect. Like I said, it takes it straight to the lid. Kind of the same way in here. It'll take it straight to the lid. Which is good, which is what you need. And on these insect cups, you can see what I mean by on these lids here. See the, the stuff for them to grab onto? I don't know how well this camera focuses. You can kind of see all, see all these little spots for the praying mantis' feet to grab onto. Their feet have hooks. That's how they hang. It, it, it hooks it kind of like a fish hook, snagging stuff. That's kind of what it does. It snags. It doesn't really snag because they walk, but it grabs. It grabs this, and they need something to grab on to hang upside down and shed their skin. That is crucial. That is very crucial. So that's why these insect cubs have lids like this. If you don't have an insect cub and maybe... You get like a, this is basically a deli cup. Like, I'm um, not basically, it really it is a deli cup, except they call them insect cups because of the, because of these lids here. But say you go to a deli and you get a cup like this. You're like, oh, I want a praying mantis. You take your lid and we'll pretend this isn't here. You'll take something like a paper towel, like this, take it to your lid, spread it out, cut it to size. You could either staple it to your lid or you could glue it or whatever. Just make sure you have ventilation because you can see the ventilation holes in here. And basically the same idea. This is a tiny little praying mantis here we got. Fits pretty good in this little cup. To raise it, you do the same, same old thing. You spray her down good. You put your popsicle stick in there. And Add your little mantis right to the cup. And this, they'll grow in here. You basically keep them in here until they outgrow it. Once they outgrow this, you move them on to this. The best thing to feed baby praying mantis is fruit flies. These, these are just fruit flies I bought from the pet store. You can see them all in there. They will reproduce. This looks kind of gunky because they've been reproducing. But what will happen is they'll start with a few and they'll reproduce and you got a whole entire ton of little feeders in there. And this this will be one culture of fruit fly will, will literally get a praying mantis belt. That big right there. And once it gets like this big, it goes right in here. And then from there, it'll grow. It'll grow into a bigger nymph. And after it's done getting, turning into a bigger nymph, It'll grow into this. Come here. It'll grow into this bad boy right here. And then you successfully raise a praying mantis. There you go, buddy. I'm, I'm going to put this one back outside once I'm done with this video. But yeah. This is it. This is how you start. He's actually drinking. I don't know if you can see that. He's drinking the droplets off the side of the container. That's how you get them to drink. You will, all, you will see the droplets. Zoom in here. Yes, you can see the droplets there. This little praying mantis. They're just drinking away. Just drinking away on the side there. And that's how you get them to drink. 
That this is this is how you take care of a praying mantis. I wish this would focus. Yeah, there we go. That's the focus. This is all you need right here. All you need. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned how to take care of your very own pet praying mantis. Now I'm gonna show you my actual pet praying mantis eating. This is my actual pet praying mantis. I just used a different type of praying mantis for this video demonstration because it's kind of the more common praying mantis. You will not find a praying mantis like this around your house, but this is the type of praying mantis I have. It is a dead leaf praying mantis, and now she's gonna eat a mealworm. I'm not actually going to feed her right now because she's literally just ate. As you can see how fat she is. You guys need to see this praying mantis attack something. So I'm going to roll a clip from a few days ago of her attacking and eating a cricket. Alright guys, I just released both praying mantises back on the same bush where I found them. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos to come.